You guys ask me questions on Twitter and this is a video answering a lot of them. This will be an ongoing series, so if you have any questions that you want to ask me, make sure to use hashtag AskEdica and you'll be able to get your questions to me ASAP. Let's get started. All right, the first question comes from Volten and he asks, Oh, Etika, will you ever host the EWN event? Or is there any future of events? Is there any future events in the hope of expanding and getting people to hang? Well, I do live in New York City, so that is quite a big place. So I am trying to see if I can host up some games or maybe like host up some meetups later on. But at this point, I'm not exactly sure who would be down. So if any of you would be down for a meetup in New York City, then let me know. But until I get more money to go to other places, it would be limited to here. Anyways, next question. Roxas asks, Etika, what do you prefer if you buy consoles, the PS4 or the Xbox One? PS4 is a lot more affordable and still a next gen experience, so it would have to be the PS4 until I get better funds for the Xbox One. And that's literally, that's literally the only reason why I would get the PS4 over the Xbox One, because I think the Xbox did come around a lot from when they originally announced their console with the whole DRM thing and everything, so that would be the only thing that would keep me from getting one. If I had the funds, I would get both, but right now the PS4 is cheaper, I'll go with the PS4. Vmagna8 asks, Etika, how tall are you? Huh. <laughs> I'm actually six foot six, and um, I think in centimeters that is 200 and well, whatever. You can do the calculations yourself because I don't want to sound stupid on camera. But um, yeah, I'm six foot six. Roxas, another question, ask Etika. Besides Attack on Titan, what other anime do you watch? Actually, right now at the moment, I don't really watch too many others. I did get a lot of suggestions for Kill a Kill, but. I'm kind of busy at the moment to the point where I don't know if I could have the time dedicated to that, especially since I would want to record every single episode of me watching it. But if I get enough response, then sure thing, I'll make some time for it. But I kind of want to invest my time in things that I know will progress me forward. And Kill a Kill would be sort of like an experiment for me. Kind of like how Attack on Titan was, but it turned out to be one of the biggest things on the channel. Ha, <laughs> figures. Mr. Dillaby asks, hey Etika, I really like your camera view style. Do you mind if I use it too? And how do you promote your channel? And by the way, I'm a huge fan, no homo. Well, in terms of my camera style, you can go ahead and use it. It's not like I got this sideways, like with the footage thing copyrighted or something. So go ahead and feel free. And in terms of like channel promotion and how I promoted myself, dude, it's very difficult, especially if you have good quality content. It usually takes a lot of going out of your way in order to make your your channel big like one thing I can say is that the reason one of the reasons why I grew up so fast on YouTube is because this is pretty much my full-time thing you know like I knew that I wanted to do videos for a long time now and so I was able to dedicate all my time and effort to making my channel better and to like I would go on reddit sometimes post up a thread there and people would see my channel from there and I had good quality stuff so they would like it and respond to it really well so it all depends on how you market yourself you know what I mean yeah, so look up other things to do like that, you know, you can look up places online like that. I used to post on 4chan a lot as well, because I, I originated on 4chan, but anyways, next question. Dakota Deluti, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Dakota Doty asked, what would you, what would be your advice for people who are getting into the process of making their YouTube channel? Well, if you're going to make a YouTube channel, right, you gotta decide whether you're going to do it seriously, like a full-time thing, or if you're just going to do it for a hobby. Because I think there's uh, multiple kinds of YouTubers, and there's YouTubers that do it for fun, that just do it for like a pastime, and then there's YouTubers that do it as a serious means of a lifestyle. And so, me, I'm a YouTuber that does it like seriously. Like this is also really, really fun for me, and I love it, but it's also my income at the same time. And I love YouTube for that because it allows me that freedom to be able to do both those things and I, I love making videos I love gaming as well so it works out really well for me so you have to be able to know what you want to be on YouTube for once you have a goal set in mind then basically it's all about making sure that your channel fits every single criteria that is needed to make that goal happen because I knew I wanted to be a youtuber and I knew I wanted to like just make videos and to be able to produce content and, and render and make stuff for you guys I knew that I would need the tools necessary Necessary to do that at a very consistent basis so basically a really fucking good computer and a really good camera with the necessary microphones and such and lighting but basically once you get all that criteria down then it's all about making the videos you know you got to know what you're what you're going to aim for what your videos are going to be about what kind of subjects you're going to talk about if how personal you're going to be with your audience once you have all that set in mind then you can go ahead and start making your channel a lot of people do it I think sporadically without really any kind of direction and that's what makes channels kind of like swear it off to the side you know what I mean because they don't really have a set goal in mind but as long as you have everything set out for you in front then it shouldn't be too difficult for you to get yourself getting off the ground but at the same time it could be as well because a lot of it is exposure and exposure is difficult to get since YouTube is so oversaturated but 
Yeah, that's another question. Okay, this this weird guy with a name ask <laughs> Etika, what is the name of your haircut if it has one? This is called the high top fade. Fancy Tyranthra mask, Etika or Desmond, would you ever do a top 10 favorite Pokemon? And also, what is your favorite region? Favorite region is definitely Johto from Gold and Silver. I mean, that's a classic. I'm, I'm a 90s kid, so of course that one would be in my mind a lot. And in terms of a top 10 Pokemon, once I beat the game and I get competitive battling, then I'll probably will, but I already know that Furfro is going to be in the top 10, that's for sure. Infamous Angelo asks, Etika, please tell me that you've seen this. That is Attack on Titan Abridge, my friend, and trust me, I will watch it eventually. It's just kind of difficult for me to dedicate time to that kind of thing, but I will. I will eventually. I will. I'm just running around a lot, especially today. I actually got to go and meet up with some family members in a couple of minutes. I shouldn't be doing this video at all, but yet, here I am. <laughs> Darnell Cobb, wait, no, no. Yoe Kensuke asks, Etika, how do you choose your Pokemon team for battles? Now, this is actually an interesting question. It basically revolves around me using Pokemon that I like. Usually, I try to make at least one Pokemon that I really like a lot, even if it isn't that utilizable, and then make it utilizable using the teamwork of the other members of the whole team. And doing that, I can get some really interesting use out of certain Pokemon that would be discarded as just being like not standard, you know what I mean? So it's all about making sure that you have at least one Pokemon that you really want to use that's maybe not that standard, and then making him standard using the teamwork and support of the entire team around him. Try to think about it like that, instead of getting individual members working as individual units, you know what I mean? Instead of work, all of them working as individuals, make sure that they all all work together. Mohammed El Mohammed El Borosli asks Etika, what do you think of the new Eminem album? I actually haven't listened. In, I haven't listened to it, and in fact, I haven't bought an album or listened to a hip hop album in a long time, ever since 2006. So, uh, sorry. PMK94 asks Etika, how did you meet all the members of your main squad in the Attack on Titan tribute game? Well, these were guys that I had met as I was experimenting with the game and playing with different people in different places online when it first came out that it had multiplayer. Some of them I met on Fang's forum, and some of them I met on my Skype. But overall, these are all just really cool guys that I pulled from various places when I first started and we've been tight ever since so that's pretty much the main way. Some of them I've also met in my subscriber games where I've been playing with people and I decided that some of them were cool so I just invited them to the main group so that's basically the way. Tim asked how long were you modeling? I was modeling for roughly maybe like six months, seven months, something like that. Yeah it didn't last too, I, wait no I think I've been modeling for like a year, almost a year. It hasn't been exactly a year but like maybe ten months so not not too long I guess but long enough. Chelsea Caballos asked if you lived in a world similar to Attack on Titan, what character would you be most like? That is a damn good question. That is actually a very difficult question because I'm taking into consideration that I, if I was living in the Attack on Titan world, my mindset would be very negative. Like everybody's mindset would be more, everyone's mindset would be more pessimistic, if you know what I mean. So it would be difficult to be the kind of person that I am now if I was in the Attack on Titan world. And I know what I'm like in pessimist mode, so I would probably be the most like, uh the most like John, I would have to say John, because he's very sarcastic, he's not hes not too pessimistic, actually he is sort of pessimistic, it all depends, but I can see myself being him the most if I was in such a situation like that, you know what I mean? It would be hard for me to be enthusiastic and cheery as I am right now, knowing that there's man-eating monsters who want to get in my asshole. Anyways, that is all the time that we have for today, but I'm going to be doing this pretty much every other day I'll be trying to keep those questions coming and even if you ask me some questions beforehand if you want to ask me some more go ahead I really want to get more personal with you guys I want myself to be out there my life is an open book and I want as much transparency between the two of us as possible so yeah thank you for asking these questions and I'll talk to you in the next one take care of yourselves and of course as usual please have yourself a damn good one